So when you take alcohol, which is a sedative, your brain counters it by releasing adrenaline and cortisol, which is a stress hormone, to counter the anaesthetizing, sedating effects of the alcohol. These are my questions for you. Does alcohol actually relax us? So no, in short. So it's it, it's it's an it's a sedative, a depressant. And when I use the word depressant, I'm using it in its chemical sense as something that decreases or inhibits nerve activity. So when you drink it, you do feel slightly more dull, relaxed, however you want to call it. And obviously, as you drink more, you become increasingly intoxicated as you keep anaesthetizing your sort of central nervous system. But the problem is the brain reacts to things. So your brain has a huge array of its own naturally produced chemicals, drugs and hormones, things you would have heard about like um, cortisol and adrenaline and dopamine and endorphins. These are all chemicals, drugs and hormones that your brain creates and excretes. Now, it's a very complicated process and we humans don't fully understand it. But what we do know is the brain works by way of something called homeostasis. So that, that is just a fancy word for a balance of all these chemicals, drugs and hormones. So when you take alcohol, which is a sedative, your brain realizes that there's been a, an imbalance to this homeostasis, this balance. So it tries to address the balance. Now, alcohol being a sedative, it does, your brain does lots of things, but one of the things it does is really stimulant. So you've got depressants that make you feel sleepy and relax you, and you've got um, stimulants like caffeine and amphetamines that wake you up and make you feel more alert. Nicotine as well is a stimulant. So when you take alcohol, which is a sedative, your brain counters it by releasing like adrenaline and cortisol, which is a stress hormone to counter the anaesthetizing, sedating effects of the alcohol. So I sometimes think of it like those old fashioned weighing scales, you know, the bar that sort of pivots in the middle and you've got a basket hanging off each end. Yeah. So if you think of it, you've got stimulants and depressants as each of the baskets and you've got a small amount in each one. If you put a load in the sedative side, obviously it tips up. So your brain puts a load in the stimulant side to ban balance it. So you go back to being balanced. But then, of course, the alcohol doesn't stay in your system forever. It gets processed and removed. So when that happens, the bar tips the other way. Um, so another way of explaining it really is as simple as for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So whatever sedating, anaesthetizing you get from a drink, you get a corresponding feeling of anxiety and uptightness when it wears off. Um, so there's a few points to take away from that. Firstly, from a completely like mental perspective, it doesn't relax you. Well, it does. It may make you feel slightly more sedated. But then whenever it wears off, you get that corresponding feeling of anxiety. Now, one drink will be a minor feeling of anxiety three four five drinks will be larger and larger and larger feeling of anxiety but because your brain releases cortisol and adrenaline to counter it those two things put your blood your blood pressure and heart rate up so although you feel relaxed your body's going into a stress so people who wear um fitness trackers that monitor your stress levels i think garmin do it yeah, um, yeah. when you drink alcohol, your body goes into a huge stress response. So it manifests itself as massive stress because your heart rate's gone up, your blood pressure's gone up. So although you feel mentally relaxed, your body's having this massive stress hormone. So, so it does two things. One, it doesn't relax you mentally or it does, but then there's a corresponding feeling of anxiety. So you're paying when you come down off it. But secondly, your body just goes into this massive stress um, response. Got it. And so, you know, you've had your drink and everybody talks about that moment of the, the sigh of the, oh, you know, that kind of relaxation that everybody seems to seems to miss. But what's mm -hmm. actually happening is your body's going into a, a response or a reaction that's quite counter to the relax, relaxed state. And then there's all these stress hormones and other chemicals that are going to create the anxiety five, six hours later, is that? Yeah, that's pretty much it. And the other thing, of course, is this unpleasant feeling you get. I, I refer to it as withdrawal, and it is a withdrawal. I mean, some people think of alcohol withdrawals as kind of like DTs and really extreme things like alcohol-induced seizures and all the rest of it. But for me, a withdrawal is 
an unpleasant feeling caused by a chemical imbalance that is itself caused by the previous dose of the drug wearing off. So for me, that unpleasant feeling you get is alcohol withdrawal. It usually hangs around, even at low levels, for like 24 to 36 hours. So people who are drinking regularly, you just described it as that that sigh, that lovely feeling you get. It's actually no more than getting back to how you'd feel had you not had a drink in the first place, because you're feeling uptight and anxious because you've got that chemical imbalance. So there's two ways you can get rid of that chemical imbalance. One is to wait a few days for your brain chemistry to get back to normal. But there's a far quicker way, and that's to take another drink because you're feeling uptight and nervous because your brain's geared up to work under the stating effects of the alcohol, but there's no alcohol present. So if you take a drink, you immediately feel better. So for daily drinkers, the great pleasure they're getting, you know, that lovely sigh feeling you get of just, oh, peace and harmony and everything's good again. That's what you get all the time if you don't drink. Obviously, you have ups and downs and you get things that stress you, but your default position is to feel, you know, relaxed and confident. Yeah, I I can totally relate to that because I I feel that now without the substance. But a lot of people are really stuck, aren't they, in that total Mm. cycle and they're relieving the symptoms of the alcohol with the substance that's creating the symptoms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a horrible cycle to be in and it's incredibly hard to get out of it because I know at the time I, 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 I sort of did an Instagram post a while ago and it was um, how it felt to me is like you're in rough seas clinging onto a raft and the rough seas and life and all the ups and downs it gives you and alcohol is the raft and you're clinging onto it and you can't imagine letting go of it. Um, And then various things happen and you let go. And to me, the analogy is you actually find you're standing in like two foot of water. You're absolutely, you didn't need the raft at all. And that's what it was like. You're sort of clinging on desperately, not really happy, not being able to control anything, but just clinging on for dear life to this raft and then letting go and thinking, I just didn't need it at all. Without, I'm suddenly standing on my own two feet again. And it's incredibly hard to see when you're in that cycle because you're going through that heightened anxiety and the only time you feel good is when you take that drink and the thought of letting go of alcohol is incredibly intimidating because you just think of the rest of your life with that horrible anxious feeling but actually it disappears after just a few days yeah absolutely I love that that image you know it's kind of almost comical when you think about it we're hanging on to this thing and you, you let go and you're standing up and you're just fine 